let's have an example on time series. Yeah. Example one. They've given us the year. They've given us the years, which is from 2013 to 2021. Then the number of students for all the years. Yeah, and we said in time series, time is always the independent variable. And the independent variable is the x. So years is what we shall regard as our x. And then the number of students will be the y. So required, they want us to use the above table to predict the enrollment rate for the year 2025. Yeah. So when they ask when they ask a question, they may not put the word time series anywhere. But if they give you time and then other variable, just know that it's the, it's time series. Or if in the question they include the year. Or the period it means that it is about time series so they want us to predict the enrollment rate for the year 2025 and we said when we are calculating for time series we use the least squares method and the method is y is equal to a plus bt whereby b is equal to summation y t out of summation t squared and then A is summation Y out of A. So we shall draw our table. We shall draw our table. We shall start with the year. They gave us from 2013 to 2021. So we shall include all the years. And then the number of students. We said years are our X. And then the number of students are the Y. So we copy the number of students from here. We put them here. 90, 100, 80, like that. All of them. After that, since when we are calculating A, we shall need summation Y. So we get the summation of Y before we do anything else. So summation Y, we add all of these to get summation Y. And then according to the question, we shall need, I mean according to the formula, we shall need yt and then we shall need t squared. Yeah. So in order for us to get t squared, we first need the column of t, then yt, then t squared. Yeah. So how do we get t? t is time. Calculating for t. If the number of years is odd, odd numbers are those numbers whereby if you divide by 2, you get a remainder, a remainder of 1. So if the number of years is odd, we calculate time by getting the current year minus the middle year. But if the number of years is even, we calculate time by getting 2 into brackets, current year minus the middle year. So... Let's see the number of years. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9, so the number of years is odd. 9 is an odd number. So we are going to use this to calculate our time. Current year minus the middle year. So let's get the middle year. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then this side, 1, 2, 3, 4. The remaining year in the middle is 2017. So 2017 becomes our middle year. So we are supposed to get the time for each, for each year. For, tw for, tw for 2013, we said we get, we get the current year. Sorry. We get the current year. The current year is 2013, then minus the middle year, which is 2017. So, 2013 minus 2017. We get negative 4, and negative 4 becomes our T. Then, for, the, for 2014, we do the same thing. 2014 
minus the middle year which is 2017 we get negative 50 that's what we put here then the following year is 2015 minus 2017 we get negative 2 so it's what we put here and we do the same thing for the rest of the years 2016 minus 2017 negative 1 2017 minus 2017 we get a 0 like that so you do for all the years you get their time after that we shall need yt and we say the number of students is the y so we get y times t which is 90 times negative 4 90 times negative 4 we get negative 360 is what we put here then the next one is 100 times negative 3 we get negative 300 it's what we put here then we do the same thing for the rest of the years multiply this times this this times this until then after that we shall need t squared t squared we shall simply square t t to get t squared so the first one is negative 4 squared which is negative 4 squared we get 16 this is what we put here then the second one is negative 3 squared negative 3 squared we get 9 we do the same thing for the rest of the figures yeah after getting them we get summation t squared we add all these we get 60 then we even have to add summation yt and it is 35 so after that the next thing we are going to do is to substitute in our formula this formula so that we can get the value of b and value of a then we get the trend that we are looking for so our equation is y is equal to a plus bt whereby b is equal to summation yt out of summation t squared from from our table summation yt 35 so it's what we put here 35 out of summation t squared which is 60 it's what we put here then we put it on the calculator thirty five divided by sixty we get zero point five eight fifty three which is zero point five eight it becomes our b then a it is summation y out of n n is the number of items one two three four five six seven eight nine so our n is nine and then summation y is 834 834 so we come here 834 divided by n which is 9 put it on the calculator which is 834 divided by 9 we get 92.6 when we round off we get 92.7 so our a is 92.7 after that we substitute in the equation we have a and we have b so y is equal to a is 92.7 plus b which is 0 0.58 t this becomes our trend equation that they asked for this becomes a trend equation it's not what they asked for they said use the above table to predict the enrollment rate for the year 2025 20, so we have to determine the enrollment rate for the year 2025 yeah. so the enrollment rate for the year 2025 we already have the trend equation 
so we calculate 40 in 2025 so we calculate for the t the time for 2025 and we said t is current year minus middle year and from the table our middle year was 2017 and the current year right now is 2025 so t is equal to 2025 minus 2017 once we put it on the calculator, 2025 minus 2017, we get 8. So our T is 8. After that, we shall come in the equation where there is T, we substitute it with 8. So we do it where there is T, we put 8. And we get the enrollment rate in 2000. We get the enrollment rate in 2025. And that is how we calculate it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment. Watch my next video. We shall have an example. Another example where the number of years are even.